I know, I know, I don't need another project. I keep being told this by lots of people that, I don't know, maybe I should finish one of the other projects I have before I take on another one. But I promise you, this isn't what it looks like. I mean, it is what it looks like. It's a Mitsubishi GTO or a 3000 GT if you're in the uh, US. And ultimately, yes, I have got another project. However, it is with good reason. At least it's a good justifiable reason for me, but I'm frequently good at making good justifiable reasons for things. That's why I have a Thunderbird. As you can see, this is multiple different shades of red and pink. And my friend who owns this, Adrian, who you might have seen on the channel before, he's been helping out with another series where we actually featured this car, wanted to sell it. And I decided that I would take it purely because I don't think it's going to reach fair value in the condition that it's in. Um, as you can see, obviously, it is very faded up here. The sides are faded, the skirts are all right. The lacquer is completely peeling across the bonnet. The uh, plastic coating on some of the vents is coming off. It's really not looking its best. But mechanically, it is completely sound. Apart from the usual things that go wrong on these because they're 90s Japanese electronics in cars that have been out in the weather for a couple of decades. So the aero doesn't work on the front, the aero doesn't work on the back, but we might try and have a look at that time depending in a future episode. But the main thing is to get the paint back looking good. And we've done quite a lot of paintwork recently, and having seen this, knowing that he then wants to get rid of it because he's got something else and needs to free up the cash, I said, don't worry, I can fix the paint, and then we can sell it for more, and we'll both be better off financially, and I can use that to fund some other projects. So we're going to start on this wing, and I'm going to do a bit of a test. I want to see what the difference is between one of these machine polishers, polishing by hand, and using the roops. Now, I'm pretty sure the Roops is going to be what I'm going to use across the majority of the car. However, I was given this recently by a friend who was moving house, didn't have any need for it anymore, and basically my curiosity got the better of me. So I'm going to run the Roops over the front piece, I'm going to do the middle bit by hand, and I'm going to do the back bit first with this machine polisher and see how good it is. I have used one before, I must admit I wasn't hugely impressed by it, and I did end up doing most of the work by hand rather than working with this, so I'm interested to give it another go now that I've learned a little bit more because I'll be brutally honest I was very green to doing anything cars or bodywork when I last used one of these but I'm kind of intrigued and this seems like a pretty good excuse to try and do a test between the three different things not least because this is a nice flat piece uh, like physically that the paint is flat that is it's it's pretty well faded evenly across so it's a decent test and it's got no lacquer that we have to remove first Well, I don't think any of you are going to be particularly surprised by the results. The Roops did extremely well, as you'd kind of expect for something that costs 300 odd pounds. So that's what it was like before. That's what the Roops brought it up to at the front, which is absolutely glorious. Doing it by hand in the middle isn't bad. It's nice and uniform across the whole area. And obviously it has made quite an improvement but the luster on this section is nowhere near as good as the original paint here and I did move this piece of tape over as you saw so you could get a reasonably good comparison between the two where I did hand sanding uh, sorry hand polishing and using the cheap little DA and I gotta say I'm not that impressed by the DA again it's done all right down here but round the top and particularly at the edge, it really hasn't done all that well. It's still kind of faded towards the edge. Maybe that's just because of where I was holding it, but I was pretty certain I held it and went along. I'm just going to give it another quick going over. This is, to be fair, just using regular T-cut, whereas the, um, the other two sections, I used the, um, the polishing compound that comes with the roots. So I wouldn't necessarily say this is a completely 100% fair test but let's just give this a minute to go off and I'll just run this down again.
this a go. Okay, that looks a lot better now. The top edge now is uniform, the same as it is down the bottom here. So I think it must have just been the angle that I was holding at. But it's still only about the same as the hand sanding part. It's, it's not, sorry, hand polishing section. And it's nowhere near as good as what the roops looks like. And the other massive problem that I have with this, which I think you, can, you might be able to make out on the close-up, is that it almost looks like it's burnished some of the paint because this only has one speed. It's on or it's off. And at the moment, with it being a very hot day at the moment, it's probably putting too much heat into this panel. The roops, obviously, you can turn it down, hand, doing it by hand, you can go as gently as you want to, to sort of work out and work over where you need to with the right amount of pressure. So it's okay, it's as good as doing it by hand, but you're gonna have to be very, very careful when you use it in, just to make sure you don't burn the paint. So I'm gonna go across this wing with the roops again, get everything to one level, and we'll come back. Well, that looks way better. All of those little marks that you saw in the close-up have now gone away, where it was sort of burnished, the little uh, pock marks. I think that must have just been tea cuts. Obviously, it's come straight out of the, of the top. It's all sorted. I wonder if it's just where it clumped around some of these tiny little uh, marks in the paint. I think with some more finer grade polishing and some more time, I can probably get this looking a lot better again, but we'll see. I just want to, again, much like the Thunderbird, one colour is good and then we can go over and start making it look better and better and better in successive passes rather than having one absolutely mint looking panel on a car that looks very, very tired. So the next test is to see how we can get rid of this lacquer because we need to get all of this off back to flat paint and then we can go back and go over the top with lacquer again. But it's gonna take a little while to get this lacquer off and I'm hoping that the roots will just kind of go through it. It does seem to have taken off some at the very edge where I've gone across, so I am hopeful. Well, that is a resounding no. The Roops is not aggressive enough to take off the, uh, the, the peeling lacquer. It's, it's actually still holding on reasonably well. And the areas that it's peeling are small enough that you just can't get underneath and kind of flake it off, which is what I was hoping, which is a bit of a shame. That means I'm probably going to have to go over this entire thing with uh, wet and dry and take all of that lacquer off. What's there, the Roops has polished really, really nicely. So it does still do a good job of that, which again, you kind of expect, but unfortunately it is not going to be enough to take that lacquer back. And I'm just wondering what the best option is gonna be for the next step. Well, I think I found a solution. My 240 grit Abronet will definitely get through, but I think it's gonna be a little bit too abrasive and it's gonna to leave too many marks in the paint underneath that I'm then gonna to have to correct out and I don't want to go that route. I don't wanna to have to wet sand this too much after I take all of this lacquer off. I've got some worn 240 discs, but again, they're gonna be a bit of a guess as to what they actually are. I'm sure they feel like more 320, 400, but ultimately they will probably still be closer to 240. I have got some 800 grit wet and dry as well, but that was too slow. But what I found was these Scotch-Brite pads, which don't actually have an abrasive um, count on them. I might see if I can find the box or see if I've got another one that says anything. But these do a really good job of getting through the lacquer because it's just peeling. They seem to get underneath and just lift it off and they leave a reasonably good finish behind. It's still gonna need a little bit more work, but to get the bulk of this off and get down to paint, these seem to be doing really, really well. So I'm going to go over the whole bonnet with this on here on a nice low speed, probably one or two. I tried it on two and, uh, and see how far we can get back. Well, after a good few hours, I've been over the entire bonnet and this is as good as I can get it. I know there are a few spots, there's a couple under my arm where I went through down to primer as well. There's a big one in the middle and there's a couple of these little spots around, but even with those there, this needs a repaint. Just the bonnet. The wings, everything else seems to be looking pretty good, but the bonnet definitely really needs redoing. The whole colour of the... really needs 
redoing. The paint has faded, not just faded like, oh, it'll come back with some tea cut. I have been over this with the machine polisher, with the, the, the roots and all sorts of things. And the only thing I've managed to do is get it down to primer in a couple of little spots. And obviously that one over there, this has been really badly bleached. And the pattern that you can see across the middle, that's where the lacquer was left. Everything else has been bleached through completely by the sun and no amount of polishing is gonna bring this back up, which is a bit of a shame. I'd hoped I wasn't gonna to have to actually throw any paint on this other than touching up a couple of little chips here and there, but that is not going to be the case. So the bonnet at least is gonna to have to be resprayed. On the upside, the panels down the side of the car have come up really, really nicely, just with a really quick going over with the DA. Obviously, I haven't done the wing mirrors yet. They're a little bit too involved to try and get in. So the area around that, I'm going to do by hand at a later date. And the next thing I'm going to do, once this grasshopper moves, is uh, reattach this side skirt so that it's not coming off the wing. And I'm also going to have a look at trying to fix the, um, the dent that's in the wing on this side. Fortunately, one on the other side isn't dented, so I have got a profile that I can try and match it to and just see if I can massage it back out because it's not actually cracked the paint at the top. So I'm really hopeful that that will just kind of bend a little bit more back into shape. There are obviously a couple of little bits of rust that we need to deal with as well. Corner around here, just above the light. And I think a little bit more on that side at the front edge of the wing. And there's a couple of spots similarly on the other side of the car as well. So we need to get all of those taken care of before we do anything too much more involved with the main body of paint on the car. Now up on the roof, there are some telltale signs of what I think has caused the problem on the bonnet. You can see the outside edges, this corner and very prominently to the camera on that corner, have worn through at the edges, as have the back edge along here, right where the, wind, the, uh, the sunroof lifts out. And I think that's because these are the easiest spots for somebody to clean and polish. And being a mid-90s red car, this has had to be polished a lot to keep it looking red. And between these sections, because they're nice and high up and they're easy to clean, somebody's been very aggressive with it. And with the bonnet as well, I suspect somebody's been over that quite a few times, potentially with a mechanical polisher before me, or just years and years and years of somebody trying to keep it looking actually red, and they've worn the paint away. And I think that is the main reason that that one looks quite so poor. I think all in all it's come out reasonably well. It could have gone a lot worse. I'm not particularly thrilled that I went through quite so much paint on the bonnet taking that back, but unfortunately these things happen, particularly when you're learning and mostly when you're trying to be really, really careful to not go through, that's exactly when you do make the mistakes. So all in all, I think we've done reasonably well. I'm not too thrilled with how the paint has gone all the way down to primer, but at least it hasn't gone down to bare metal on the bonnet. And obviously the faded paint is a bit more of a chore. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you'll see when this machine is back, as well as the Thunderbird, the kit car, and all of the other things that we do on the channel. You can support us at patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show. And if you are a patron, you can also get discount on all of our merch over at shop.pedalbox.show. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time.